Hey, welcome back to my channel. My name is Kayla. I'm the e-commerce mom and I am a mom of three and a reseller and a blogger. I blog over at the ecommercemom.com where I talk about things that have to do with reselling and the mom life and also finances because I think it's really important for us to have a game plan once we make money and save money with reselling that we have a game plan to go forward with our spending. And so um, I want to talk to you today about something that is really not talked about enough and I think it paralyzes a lot of resellers. We're going to talk about shipping so that's something that you like. Appreciate if you would click the thumbs up button and go ahead and hit subscribe while you're there and hit the bell notification. I would love to have you join me uh, on my channel. So we're going to talk about shipping today because everybody says oh my goodness I would sell on eBay or somewhere else but I can't sell there because I don't know how to ship and if I ship I'm gonna lose money and I don't want to lose money on shipping people are scared of it because they don't know how to do it um, now some platforms like Mercari and Poshmark they've made shipping extremely easy but it's not always the most cost-efficient way to ship things but it is super easy you just kind of have categories of weights um, eBay is not like that. eBay is very specific. You choose how you want to ship things and you choose exact weights and so it's a little bit different. But this also can apply to you if you are selling on Instagram or some other platform like that where you are doing your own shipping labels. I'm going to give you the ins and outs of what kind of shipping there is out there to use and what kind of materials you need to use to ship things out in. So we're going to talk about the most important thing you need before you start any of this is a scale. Now I use an Accutex scale for most things. It goes up to about 50 pounds, I think. I'm gonna leave a link for that in the description below. So you wanna go check that out. It's about $20 on Amazon. It'll be there in a couple days and you'll be set up and ready to go. So the scale is the most important thing so that you don't lose money. Now, another important thing is to understand how the post office divides the United States up because if you understand that, you'll understand how shipping works. So the zones that you're in is based on your starting location so the area closest to you is going to be like zone one and then zone two and zone three so my zone three could be different than someone who lives in another part of the country because it's based on your location being the center point now I'm in Louisiana so if I ship something to Texas it doesn't cost that much if I ship something to Oregon or Washington State it costs a lot now, coincidentally, most everything that I sell goes to either California or New York, and those are kind of in opposite areas of the country, and I'm sort of in the center, but not in not in the center, <laughs> because I'm in the south part of the center, and so that makes it expensive to ship to those places. Now, I don't want to penalize people that live near me for shipping and cause them to pay an extraordinary amount for shipping so that I could cover all the zones. So I've kind of figured out a system of how to cover that, and I'll talk to you about that in a little bit. But we're just going to talk about general shipping right now because that is what a lot of people just need a basic knowledge of. So the first thing we're going to talk about is first class shipping. Now first class shipping has changed recently. It used to be calculated differently. Now it's calculated according to zone, just like priority mail is. So if I send something to California, it's going to cost more than if I send something to Texas, whereas before it was just a flat rate. If I wait, it's not that way anymore. So. How do we figure out what can go first class? Well, first class uh, commercial rates is different than when you walk into the post office. So on eBay or Etsy, you'll be able to buy first class commercial rates up to 15.9 ounces. So that's the highest you can send something first class. It does not come with insurance. So if you need insurance on it, you either have to pay for additional insurance or you have to send it another way that includes insurance. And this can get a little bit tricky because, you know, if your item doesn't show up, you're going to have to refund that person. Or if it comes up damaged, you're going to have to refund it. And so when you have insurance, you can do an insurance claim and get your money back. If you don't, you don't. So you have to kind of weigh that against what you're selling. I wouldn't ship anything over $20 or $30 first class. That's me personally. But whatever you ship first class is going to have to be lightweight. And it's going to get there within about two to five days. Now, if this sounds like information overload, I'm going to go ahead and, and tell you this right now. <laughs> because it can be. I have a couple blog posts that are all about what I'm fixing to tell you about today. And I'm going to link those below so that you can have a hard copy to refer to. Sort of like a chart 
that you can refer to and try to figure out and get more familiar with it because it is a little bit like drinking water from a fire hose <laughs> in the beginning but I, I promise you it gets much better so first class lightweight two to five days no insurance um, and it's based on location the pricing for it the next thing we're going to talk about is priority mail now priority mail does have um, some limitations on size and what you can send but it's pretty much for most anything and all those specifications are going to be in that blog post so make sure you go check that out it does include free insurance uh, fifty dollars for just regular sellers and then I believe top rate sellers on eBay get a hundred dollars you can buy additional insurance for that also I've done priority claims when something gets broken which is rare for me but it does happen sometimes you know you just never know and so for priority, um, it's real easy to do the claim and real easy to get the money back in my experience, so it's not a big deal. But that's what you're going to want to use for most all the big things that you ship, the larger things. And anything that's over 15.9 ounces, it's going to have to go priority. So that most people know priority mounts two to three days. It's quick and it is also based on zone and weight also, but you know, but based on zone. Now, another way you can ship things is media mail. Now, that is only for books without advertisements, so no magazines, things like that. Um, you can also ship DVDs and different things, uh, books, but media mail is really slow. It's about two to eight or two to ten days, and it can be inspected, so they can rip it open and look through it and make sure that you are not defrauding the post office by not paying for the correct mail. So, I have shipped some things this way. Um, but I don't do it a lot. It is cheaper and you'll probably want to do that if you have like a really heavy set of books or something uh, that is just would be ridiculous to ship priority mail. Probably want to use media mail for that. It's not insured so you'll have to buy additional insurance if you want that. And so, you know, use it with caution. I've not had any issues with it, but I did order something from eBay and the book was chewed up when it got to me and it was shipped media mail. I don't know if that was coincidental or not, but anyway. It happens. It happens with any, any way you ship things happen. So you just have to, you know, do the best that you can. If something happens like that, you just roll with the punches and you move on. Now, you can also ship things parcel select. Now, parcel select is slower. Sometimes it's cheaper. Sometimes priority is cheaper. It's really weird how it's supposed to be cheaper and it's slower, but it's not always um, slower or cheaper. So anyway, I don't know. It just happens to be like that. But what you can do with that is you can ship perfumes and flammable objects, aerosol cans and stuff like that. That's the only thing I use it for. Now, when I order bubble wrap, it comes um, parcel select because it comes with free shipping and it doesn't make sense to ship that priority. So that's how they send it. So I get that. I just have to order it in enough time. Now, there are other ways to ship through eBay. If you have something really large and really heavy, FedEx, ground, or home delivery is going to be the way to go. Now, they also have uh, another service called Smart Post, and it's longer. It actually goes from FedEx to the post office through Parcel Select, and that seems to just not be very good anymore. It used to be. I've heard of people having issues with insurance claims. I've never had to file one, but... Uh, they don't really want to take responsibility and eBay says it's them and the po they say it's the post office and you know how that goes and nobody wants to pay for it and so I've just never used it because or I haven't used it recently because of those issues and also a lot of times FedEx ground which is faster is actually cheaper which again doesn't make sense but that's how it happens sometimes <laughs> some of these things don't make sense so FedEx makes sense in uh, the situation where something is really large and priority mail would be ridiculously expensive. So there's a way on eBay to pick and choose things and let the customer choose what they want. And we'll talk about that later in another video on actually how to make the shipping um, settings in the listing make sense for your item. But anyway, we'll talk about that later. But this is just about normal post office stuff. Now, they also have a first class international and a priority international I believe but they have different weight limits than regular first class uh, first class international has a size uh, limit as far as the dimensions of the box that you're sending and the weight is higher than first class uh, domestic 
and I will again I'm linking those blog posts below and you can go find that um, I also I believe in the blog post it talks about what you can and cannot send media mail it gives you a link straight to the post office you can go check that out so those are the ways that you're going to ship things now internationally I ship things through eBay's um, global shipping program but uh, I don't I have shipped directly to countries I just put everything that can be listed with the GSP that way and if I pick up a few extra sales I pick them up you know I may be missing out on sales but sometimes to me it's just not worth it to do all the things so I choose the things that make the most sense for me to do them 